Thank you for your interest in the Alliance Healthcare Foundation 2018 Mission Support Grant. I am Michelle Silverthorne, Senior Director of Programs. In the next 10 minutes, I will share with you an overview of mission support, the application, and address frequently asked questions. After viewing the webinar and reading through the mission support grants pages on our website, if you still have questions, please contact me. I am holding office hours on each Wednesday that the grant is open. Of course, you are always welcome to email or call outside of those hours. The mission support grant application is currently open. It will close at midnight on November 3rd. As I mentioned, I will be hosting virtual office hours each Wednesday that the grant is open. And you're always welcome to contact me outside of those timeframes, but I will be dedicated to answering your questions on those Wednesdays. I will also be available on Facebook Messenger if you would like to contact me through chat. With that, let's jump in. Mission support began in 2011 as an initiative from the trustees to fulfill a request from the community to provide core operating support rather than project specific support. Additionally, the grant application is intended to be an application light, an application that most anyone in the organization can put together without the need for a dedicated grant writer. To be considered for a, uh, excuse me, to be considered for a mission support grant, the applying organization must align with AHF's mission to advance health and wellness for those in need work in the geographic areas of San Diego or Imperial County, and serve at least one target population. Under 250% poverty, uninsured, underinsured, homeless, or children. Meeting these criteria is essential to being considered for funding. And of course, you must be a 501c3 or partner with a 501c3 that will act as your fiscal intermedi intermediary. These images show an overview of our 2017 mission support grants. In 2017, 114 applications were received and 26 organizations were funded, 19 in San Diego and seven in Imperial. As you can see, there is overlap in the areas that the organizations work. 22 serving the poor or under 250% poverty, 11 working with uninsured, underinsured, 10 that serve the homeless and 18 working with children. The bottom image shows where our 2017 grantees have focused mission support funding with 23% using funding to maintain adequate staffing levels for programs and services. And here's our first set of frequently asked questions. Can I apply if I've applied in the past, denied or funded? Yes, you may apply annually if you were previously or are currently funded. You may have more than one AHF grant concurrently. What can I use mission support funding for? If awarded funding, you must use it for any expense that you may, excuse me, you may use it for any expense that advances health and wellness for those in need. This might include salaries or other indirect expense. So the good stuff, the application. If you have applied for an AHF grant, log in with your existing credentials. The system is organization based, so if staff that worked on previous grants is no longer with the organization, Simply create a user ID for yourself, answer a few questions, and then you will be associated with your current organization. Contact me with any questions regarding login. Once you have logged in, please take a look at the welcome text to familiarize yourself with the grant and the online system. After that, scroll to the bottom of the screen and click Start a New Application. You can always come back to this screen to review. Once in the application, you will see the timeline across the top. Clicking across the top will take you to each section of the application. You can save your work and re return to it to complete a section at a time. If you've not completed a required field, you will get a notice that your work has been saved and a list of what is not yet complete. You are able to move on to the next section without completing the previous one. Once all required fields are submitted and you have completed the application, you will arrive at the end where, are you, where you are again asked to review your, your application. Here, you can review, and once satisfied that all is complete, click Submit. Otherwise, save and return to edit. Once submitted, applications cannot be edited. So what is in the application? The first two sections are organizational details, address, website, mission, that sort of thing. Also included is the CEO or executive director contact and board and staff demographics. The next tab is primary contact information. This is the person that should be contacted for anything related to the grant. So that is the development person or the executive director. 
whoever that person is for your organization. You can also have multiple contacts and you can edit that section to delete past contacts. These two sections, as well as a couple of others, retain information from past applications. In some cases, you might only have to update rather than complete the entire page. The next two sections are related to your organization's financial information. The first financial section asks for indirect expense percentage, revenue and expense of the organization, and your primary revenue sources. AHF considers indirect expenses as those costs that are necessary for the general operation of an organization and are not specifically identified with a particular grant, contract, project, or activity. AHF does not have a formal policy on indirect expenses. The Budget N990 tab asks you to upload your budget and most recent 990. The budget, the budget may be your current year budget or projected budget. Finally, the cost per constituent is the estimated or actual cost per individual served by your organization. There is a space to leave an explanation if you would like. Demographics. Here you will be asked to identify the geographic regions of the counties that you are working in, San Diego or Imperial. Next, your areas of focus. So tell us which areas of those listed that you're working in. Next, get ready to dig into your data. We want to know the number of unduplicated people served by your organization. There is a place to mark estimated or actual for these numbers. We understand that a clinic visit is easy to track, whereas a health fair may not be. Make your best estimate if you're unsure. The final piece on this page asks you about your target population. Please note, once you click on a population, further questions will be requested, including gender, race, ethnicity, age range, and total unduplicated numbers served. And finally, the application questions. There are four questions and the three minute video. The questions do have limited characters. Question number one, please tell us how your organization provides access to quality healthcare and or other services that are timely, appropriate, and effective in advancing health and wellness in your community. Number two, describe one to two past successful innovative projects and or improvements you have implemented. Innovative projects are ones that improve operations in terms of reduced costs, improved quality, and or greater capacity. They may or may not include technology. Number three, identify your most effective collaborations in the last year and describe to us how this work aligns with AHS strategic direction to change the status quo through innovative activities. Number four, describe the key leadership within your organization with the capacity and experience to move innovations forward. And number five, the video. We ask that you create a video no longer than three minutes of the executive director, CEO, or leadership team that answers these three questions. Number one, what is the mission of your organization? Number two, how is your organization making a difference? Number three, how are you measuring impact? Videos that do not answer these three questions will not be considered for funding. Professionally produced videos are not expected and general promo, promo videos will not be accepted. When, you're completed, when you've completed the video, upload it to YouTube and provide us the link. And that's the mission support application. So here are a few frequently asked questions. Is there a character count and does it include spaces? Yes, the character count includes spaces. And I'm sorry, we will not be including additional space. The questions are kept to a minimum to preserve your time and that of our raters, trustees, staff, and committee members. We have a lot of programs, successes, organizational history, letters of support, and, we, and I want to tell you about them, but there's not space. Again, I'm sorry, the application is intended to be a light application and focus on the work you do to advance health and wellness for those in need. The questions have been selected to address specific requests of the trustees. Staff prepares reports for trustees at the funding meeting that shares additional highlights and successes of the applicant. Why do you ask for cost per constituent and indirect expense percentage? Rest assured, we do not look at these numbers and remove or recommend an organization for funding if they are too high or too low. We understand that some work is more intensive and costs more. A high low number does not equal bad or good. It means that it is that that is what it costs to do your work. 
I can't find a place to enter a grant dollar amount. How do I tell you the amount we are requesting? Grants are awarded in amounts between $25,000 to $100,000. Trustees will make final funding decisions, including dollar amounts, at their February board meeting. We just filmed a promo video. Can we use it for the application? If the video is under three minutes and addresses the three specific questions, mission statement, how you're making a difference, and measuring impact, we will consider it. Does the video have to be under three minutes? What if ours goes over? Videos will not be watched after the three minute mark. Staff, community readers, trustees, and committee members are instructed to end viewing at three minutes. I'm new to YouTube and filming a video. How do I do this? Keep it simple. A video from your smartphone is perfect. HF does not judge you on your filmmaking skills. Content is what is important. You can Google how to upload to YouTube. There are many links and how-to videos, including this one. So what happens after the application is submitted? Applications close on November 3rd at midnight. Following the close of the grant, staff will begin application review. Community readers are included in the process as are data tools, which lead to program community recommendations and finally trustee funding decisions. Grant announcements will be made in March of 2018. If you have any questions regarding the selection process or announcements, please feel free to contact me. So that completes the process for mission support applications. If there were questions that I did not address, please take a look at the how-to page, FAQ page, and grants page on our website. The web address in the middle of this slide will take you to the Mission Support Grants page. There you will find the link to the application. Additionally, as I mentioned, I will be holding office hours on October 4th, 11th, 18th, and 25th from 2 to 3 p.m. and November 1st from 9 to 11 a.m. These are each, Wednesday, each of the Wednesdays that the grant is open. During this time, you can reach me via phone, email, or Facebook Messenger. And as I mentioned, I'm, I'm always available outside of these hours as well. Thanks for watching and thank you for your commitment to advancing health and wellness for those in need.